So we are continuing this morning looking at the normal distribution. Uh, probably I should have added on, and maybe you want to add on if you haven't written your title yet. Um, specifically what we're going to look at is characteristics of the normal distribution. We've sort of seen the shape. Uh, it comes up all the time, which is why it is called the normal distribution. Uh, but we're going to learn a little bit more about it and um, we're going to get a little bit technical, which is why you've got your formula sheets there. I'll get to that in a second. So at the moment, we, have, we know two characteristics about the normal distribution and they're right there in, in your face when you just look at what the graph looks like. Can someone give me one of the characteristics? Yep. Okay, so clearly you can see it's symmetrical. There's no positive positive or negative skew, okay? So it's right smack bang down the middle. Uh, it's a bell curve shape. So that's the first thing that we notice. What was the other thing that we mentioned? It had to do with measures of location. Do you remember that? It has to do with the mean and the mode and the median. What do we notice about that on the normal distribution? They're all the same number. They're all exactly the same number and you find them right here in the middle. So the first thing I'd like you to put onto here, I've added on some um, helpful lines down the bottom, is if you draw a line up from the center, if I've done a, a reasonable job, okay, what you should find is it will line up exactly with the top of the bell curve. Okay, So down the bottom here, you move this over, be a bit more precise. There we go. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I do. Down the bottom here, I'd like us to label that as the mean. So I'm going to put that as x bar, like that. Okay. Now, what you can see is I've put a whole bunch of other markers there. And what each one represents is a standard deviation. So we know you can take a set of data and you can punch all the numbers into your calculator and then it spits out, if you ask it to, the standard deviation, which is a measure of not location, but spread. Do you remember that? So each one of these markers on the side here <coughs> is one of those standard deviations. So if the standard deviation on your set of scores was like five across a, a test out of 100%, okay? Then if this is 50%, then this would be 55 and this would be 45. Does that make sense? So we've gone one, one standard deviation either way. Okay. Now here's where your colors are gonna come in. If we say, I'll zoom in a little bit here, on either side I've got, oops, the mean plus one standard deviation. So I'm gonna write that as X bar plus, you might remember the symbol for standard deviation. Sometimes people use an S, for standard deviation, um, but the more common symbol and a little more specific is this weird Greek letter here with an N on the side. If you add one standard deviation, you go to the right. If you subtract one standard deviation, you go to the left. Okay. Now you can see definitely, and I'm going to ask you to draw a couple of vertical lines here just like we did before. As you can see, the lion's share of people in this population are between these two markers, right? So if you go plus one standard deviation, minus one standard deviation, all the people in between, look how much of the population that is, right? A huge proportion of people are in there. So let's actually, if you've got um, some colors there, maybe a highlighter or something like that, um, I'm gonna shade that in. Sorry, mine's a bit messy, but you'll get the idea. Okay. So the way I would describe this group of people that I've shaded in here is that they are within one standard deviation of the mean. That's a really important phrase, so I'd actually like you, I've given you some space on the right hand side. Um, so we'll write this all in. This group of people I've shaded in the middle, they are within one standard deviation of the mean. They may be above, they may be below, but in terms of distance, they're within that range. Yeah. Say that again. This is not the same. This is not the same as what? Sorry. As Q three minus Q one. Oh, great question. That's right. It's very different. We're talking not about quartiles, but about standard deviations, which is much more fine and precise. Okay, so that's a good question. So this is not about um, upper or lower quartiles. This is about um, standard deviations. Okay. 
Okay. So I actually missed a bit off the end there. It's within one standard deviation of the mean. Now I said, um, clearly just by looking at the graph, this is most of the people in the population. Because normal distributions happen so frequently in nature and in populations, this one standard deviation amount has actually been very highly studied. And so we know in a normal population, <coughs> the standard deviation calculation gives you specifically, and I'm going to put it in right in the middle here, uh, let, me, let me draw over it. It gives you... Oops approximately 68% of the population you will find within one standard deviation of the mean. And you can see that on the, just by looking at the shape of it, 68% uh, is about, about 70, right? So you're getting about 30% on either side who are outside of that standard deviation, who are that far away from the average, okay? Okay, so that number 68% is really important. We'll come back to it in a minute. Now I want you to come to the next graph, okay? Within one standard deviation, you get most people. But if you go further, if you go a second standard deviation away, so again, let's mark in the mean. It's right there in the middle. I'm going to go not just one marker out, but two markers out. So you can see this marker over here, whoops, yeah, that's, that's fine, is the average plus two standard deviations. So that's two times this little weird character here. Okay. If you draw up your line from there, there we go, and you make one on the opposite side, two standard deviations below the mean, that's going to be over here, minus. Okay, does that make sense? You following? Okay, so let's highlight this now. Yes. And you can see because we've gone, whoops, because we've gone further, you're getting a much larger proportion of the population. So how would we word this, um, this population now over here that I've shaded? Well, you're not within one standard deviation of the mean anymore. You're within two, two standard deviations of the mean. And that's how you would word it. So as you're, as you're coloring in, because you're getting more of it, again, this pattern, this calculation has been well researched. What we find is that you get, within two standard deviations of the mean, approximately 95% of the population. Okay? Um, to be two standard deviations above or below the mean is quite exceptional. Right? So if you are that far away, that means you're within a 5% bracket of the population because you're quite extraordinary in one direction or the other, okay? Alright, so I gave you three standard, uh, rather three normal distributions. What do you think we're going to put on the last one? Within three. Okay, so again, the most important thing is you put the mean on there. So put X bar right there in the middle. And this time we're going to go three. So that's the last marker I believe that I've given you. Oops, I missed. So, um, by now you're sort of starting to get there. It takes longer to color because you're coloring more of the population. Um, which leads me to my last question, which is how much of the population? So we went 68%, then we got 95%. Three standard deviations is really far away from the mean. You have to be really quite an amazing person one way or the other. So what you get if you're three standard deviations away is, whoa, that's not the size I wanted, is approximately 99.7% of the population. Okay. Now those numbers, those numbers really matter, which is why I've given you the formula and data sheet because if you have a look at the first page of the formula and data sheet, the one that we haven't reduced, it's, it's full A4, okay? I want you to have a look at the bottom right hand corner and you will see this piece of information about the normal distribution. There are the dot points, right? Do you see? I'll just load it up over here. Here we go. <coughs>
Can you guys read it there? Do you see it above my head? Behind my head? Okay. You've got approximately 68% who have Z scores. What, what is Z score? What's the relevance of Z score? I haven't said Z score at all until now. That is how many standard deviations you are, your score is above or below the mean. Does that make sense? So Z score of negative one would mean you are one standard deviation below, right? Z score of positive one means you're one standard deviation above. So if you have a Z score of say 0 0.5, you're in that range of 68%. Uh, if you've got a Z score of negative 1.2, you've gone outside the first bracket now you're in the second bracket, so you're within 95%, and then so on, okay? So those numbers are important. It's handy to recognize them, but in case you have trouble remembering them, they are, they are here. I'll also point out, just while you've got the formula data sheet in there, uh, you'll also recognize the formulas for outliers there. Do you see those? Do you recognize the one and a half interquartile range that's there? So again, this is not about memory. It's about being able to read this and understand what does it mean when you go lower quartile minus that much or the upper quartile plus that much, okay?